Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video on my YouTube channel. I'm Nicholas and today we are back with our second Supermassive Games Tillis video. A different approach onto my um, Supermassive Games videos where I, in a very long, prepared and edited way, talk about specific topics and these always take a lot of time and all that kind of stuff and I'm currently working on several of them. And um, yeah, the first one was about which characters I like the most, how I would rank the uh, main characters um, in terms of do I love them, do I like them, are they my favorites and stuff like that. And the second one we're doing here today, it's actually quite spontaneous because I actually want to do something else. I actually want to do a League of Legends video today playing a new champion, but I couldn't get into a game and I had to dodge and now I'm on a 12 hour timer, so you know, no video for today. So I thought, okay, what can we do? Let's do another tier list video. And the first one that I actually thought about doing was um, this time around with the topic of screen time and playability, you know, how we would rank them in that sense, you know, make a tier list to that, so we think has just the right amount of time, who needs more on point and stuff like that, right? I actually want to take more time on that because I feel like that topic in general is very, very difficult and very, very controversial in some ways because um, you need to look at how the game works and who, which character needs to do that and kind of stuff, right? I feel like that needs a bit more preparation. I could now just go in there and, you know, only 10 minutes of preparation, then talk about it and that stuff. I feel like I want to add a bit of more preparation time to give you a more um, on-point tier list uh, to that topic or maybe even... Maybe it's even worth an entire video because I feel like generally screen time and playability is something so important in choice based games about characters. So we will take a different look on that at one point in the future. We'll take my time with that. For now, the topic for today's tier list video is ranking slash tier listing all the main characters. Once again, we're leaving out the side characters because I don't know, not really that important to me. Um, about how good. Of survivors there are because obviously one of the main themes of the games is that all of the characters can die and very often that can happen because the characters um just lack the skills or you know lack the um yeah survival instinct that they need to survive specific situations now obviously it's all onto us right even the most skilled um character that's ever written can die if you make him so, obviously. So we're taking a look at how we generally deal with those characters on how good their survival skills are, how much I think they, or like how good of a chance they would have at surviving in specific moments, right? If they like come face to face um, with someone or like, you know, if they get attacked or if they have to run or if they have to hide and stuff like that, right? You know what I mean, yeah? Again, obviously, all of them can die, so technically, you know, it's all up to you, the player, but like, just on the base, how I would, um, you know, think that person would do in specific situations. So, let's do that, and as you can already see, we have five tiers this time around, we got um, one that is still question mark, we also have advanced skills, so people who I think are actually really good and will very like to survive, then average skills, so we I think we'll do just okay, you know, where it's like, I mean, obviously, there can be so many situations, so many factors and all that kind of stuff, but we try to generalize it a little bit. Then lack of skill, so someone who I think will probably have a problem, and then who I think would just straight up die, okay? If they get attacked or, you know, if in moments of danger and whatnot, um, outside of our choices, they would probably die, okay? And unlike for the first one, I do not want to start this in a... Um, um, in a way from start to end, so from the first characters in Unto Dawn in alphabetical order to the final ones in the Devil and B, I will start with the top tier because all of us know who needs to be there. Like, obviously, the entire House of Ashes cast, cast, cast needs to be above everybody else. All five of those people are legitimately trained soldiers. They're going hand-to-hand -hand combat several times with freaking vampires. Um, highly skilled in, in weaponry, in close combat, and lists of their own, obviously. Okay, the entire House of Ashes cast is leaks above the other characters in the games, which are often either kids or just normal people, so or like teenagers and stuff like that, so... You know, come on, Eric, Jason, Nick, Rachel, and Salim all 
absolutely above the rest and that's honestly also one of the main reasons why i enjoy house of ashes so much because it's such a different dynamic beforehand in all the other games and even the quarry in the me afterwards you play more normal people you know this time around or at this time you're playing highly skilled soldiers so the entire dynamic and feeling of the game is just a very different one it just feels so unique uh, for the superman's games franchise which is one of the main reasons why i love the game so much it's such a cool different feeling to play people that usually will do really well on their own but your choices can still have them die like nick so <laughs> yeah so now that out of the way you know just have to it's just obvious that they're above everybody else to answer it on and honestly i must say when we look at everything that happened throughout the game ashley is probably someone that i would expect to literally just die if she gets into a high situation of danger I think she would just literally, I don't think she really has a good chance. She feels um, very, very um, uncertain and very, very, um, you know, she likes, to, she, I think she likes to, the, the quickness and thinking and just the general um, experience also athletically to be able to do what other characters in the same game did. And it was generally never a moment um, where Ashley was even truly able to showcase any type of skills, you know, like she will always get captured, the only way she can survive um, the, 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 the trap door and all that kind of stuff is once again by choice or just not opening it, right? I mean, that is obviously, you know, something where you can say, ah, that's intelligent and kind of stuff, but I feel like Ashley, if we put her into situations that other characters were in, in the same game, she would literally just die. Imagine her in Mike's position, as example. She, I don't know, Ashley definitely feels like, from all the characters in the franchise, I wouldn't say it's the, but one of the characters that I feel like would be in the biggest trouble, if they ever got into big trouble. Next up is Chris, and I personally think that Chris showed above average skills. Man was good with the shotgun, very athletically as well, you know, using the shotgun while on the run from the Wendigo, and just generally also think just had a... It's hard to tell under the jacket, to be honest, but like I think he's generally also like a good physique and a good condition. So I would definitely put Chris in advanced skills. He really showed, um, especially given his age, that he that he knows how to survive. Okay, I think Chris definitely showed that. Okay, Emily, very interesting case. Um, because she seems like a very typical mean girl, where you would think you know big talks but nothing behind it. But my girl. In the mind sequence, really, really showed that. Sh wow, I read that all the time. Basically, like when you go into the onto on subreddit, which is generally look at comment sections, all that kind of stuff. That many people were surprised at how great she was actually at escaping and survivalism. You know, like in the early chapters, she was just a bitch, and everybody was like, "Uh, fuck you, you're just gonna die later anyways." But then she really showed, hey, she can back it up. She really, she knows how to escape. She's good on the run. She's very quick at quick thinking. Definitely more advanced and above other characters throughout the franchise. Jessica is a difficult case because she's very similar in terms of personalities, Emily, but didn't get to show um, such um, moments, you know, because she basically got cheap shotted, okay? Got attacked from the back and injured straight away, so there wasn't really any moment for her to showcase any type of skill. But I would also consider it unfair to put her into the same spot as Ashley because, again, how am I supposed to tell if she would just straight up die, like, would, you know, um, do bad in such a situation if we never got to see it or even an idea behind it? But then, actually, remember in Chapter 10, she do actually manages, even on her own, if, if Matt is not there, to potentially avoid it still, despite being injured. So I think I wouldn't put her in will die, but I still would say that she's probably, I don't know, I, I can't imagine that she's, like... Either as, as good as Emily in that sense, but I also wouldn't think she's like, I don't know, it's it's really difficult to judge like mentions, but I think she, oh, by the way, she probably lacks, lacks, wait, lacks skills? Does that sound better? Is lack of skills? Lacks skills, we just saved that. I think that's, it's okay, I think. Again, maybe average skills, definitely not will die, but I'd probably put it here. It's difficult to judge like mentioned. Josh, um, also a, oh, you didn't, okay, uh, okay, whatever, um, Josh is a bit difficult, 
because we don't get to see him that much, but I think it's more than fair to put him here as well, because he is great in chase, can knock out people if necessary, um, and just generally very intelligent, okay? He obviously is plagued by his illnesses, which would probably very likely affect many situations, but I think, especially given his background and given the way he constructed everything in, in the game, I think it's more than fair to put him here, okay? I think survival-wise, if he's put into a situation... I mean, he went ahead and... Mm, that's actually a bit weird to say. Like, I was about to say, oh, he's a, he's a good survivalist because he was willing to eat flesh of the dead person to stay alive, but it was probably the Wendigo spirit, so... Eh, a bit difficult to judge, but I think it's, I think it's fair. Okay, I think he showed in more than one um, moments throughout the game that he that he can back up. Okay, now Matt. Matt is a bit of a weird case because he is definitely he's he's a sports dude. Okay, so I think he definitely has a condition, right? He has a condition. He has the stamina. I think he's like would be very good on chase. But like besides that. there wasn't a lot of moments where you could really judge how well he would do. Or like how good he is with a gun, as an example. I think that's basically one of the biggest things in these type of situations. How well would you would be with a gun, right? Chris was able to show that he's really good with it. Um, other characters later on showed the same. Where are we putting him? It's it's a it's a you know for me between um advanced skills and average skills. I think it I think we could consider him advanced because he's like mentions heavy on sports. Only alone that gives him a lot of advantages over more normal people in this list. So yeah, I think that's okay, but then again though, I might actually need a, a another tier in between. Like, again, he showed really good skills with guns and, and chase, she showed really good survival instincts and chase. He only really has that typical physique going on for him. He is able to escape the Wendigo's grasp, which is pretty impressive to be honest. With a weapon, of course, but still, it's very strong. He's very clever. Actually, yeah, I think advanced gets is fine because he's also then very clever later on in the in the tenth chapter when he gets to that. I think it's fair to put him alongside these other characters here, which, by the way, really shows the dance with all teenagers really weren't bad. And then we obviously have Mike, who I think is definitely above the other four, but definitely not on the level of you know, but also one hundred percent okay, extremely strong with the weapon. I must admit, of course, there's a lot of plot armor involved, you know, like his double barrel shotgun that can shoot without reloading, you know, stuff like that, but I think Mike still... <sighs> again, it's it's so difficult, because again, I was about to say, you know, this chase sequence with Jessica, very great uh, physical skills as well, obviously you can make a mess it all up, but like, if we look at the game, if you complete them properly, like in a positive way, I think we need to look at it like that, then Mike really, really shows, hey, that guy can go, you know? First felt like a dick, but he later on really, really backs it all up, can go toe to toe with it when you go. Mike definitely deserves that ranking. And Sam, I'd say, I'd say same in some way. Again, I feel like, I feel like I do need maybe a different tier because of, mm, I don't know. She definitely belongs here, one hundred percent. Though in the way it is right now, because Sam um, also definitely showed great chase skills. Um, generally, has a good physique. Generally, is um, like very agile as well. On top of that, seems very smart. You know, it's very possible for her to really, really um, shine in that chase sequence of Josh, which like really, really escapes him in a, in a clever and strong way. Unless obviously the the, the, the crowd thing in the beginning that would mess her up a little bit. But I think Sam also definitely showed that she's. Um, Above average in, in quick thinking and just general survival instinct. I mean, it's generally the thing for, for normal people that um, in situations of danger um, to judge what would happen. You know, would you be frozen in fear and just die or would you have um, adrenaline kick in and you go off and all that kind of stuff, right? I think Sam is simply advanced above the average person, I'd say. 100%. Man of Medan. When we came to likability the last time around, I talked about it already, where um, I think that the Man of Medan cast is rather bland in character ways. And I feel like it's a bit of the same case here. Um, Alex, though, I would probably put into a similar conversation with Matt, simply because, uh, you know, 
Alex has probably one of the best physiques um, in, in, in the franchise, in the sense of, you know, he, he, like, he got good muscle strength, he's a swimmer, you know, like a diver as well, so he has definitely good condition and stamina on top of that, and there were moments within the game where he also did very well in chase, I think he can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Olsen, which I think other characters could do as well, but I think Alex is definitely advanced above other people, but that's not once again where it's say. Being above the average person in terms of like strength or skills and agility and all that kind of stuff. But then also like above other person in terms of weapon skills like Mike and Chris. Oh yeah, I think I might want to do that actually. I think that... Uh, yeah, yeah I think we will do that actually. I want to add another row. Um, add a row below. Oh, we didn't mess up now the overlay. No, that's still fine. Um... So average skills, the average person, you know, which we will get to in a moment, then advanced skills and highly advanced skills. So where it's not only, you know, like good in chase and quick thinking, but also like additionally very good with weaponry. And then basically the House of Vanish Castle is basically above all that in like several ways, right? So I think it's fair to do this. I think that's fair, thus far. I think Chris and Mike have highly advanced skills because they're not only great in chase and, you know, agility and everything, but they also really show great skills with weaponry, which is, like, huge. Um, and these five characters show that they're, like, very good in general condition and just general thinking. I think that's I think that's a fair thing to do. Um, now let's quickly change this stuff. Uh, oh, yellow. Do, do, do. We're just doing it on the fly. Like I mentioned, these type of videos are way more... Um, way more chill, right? I don't want them to be perfect when it's edited a lot. I just want it to be a, a one take with a lot of with a lot of talking, with a lot of thinking together. I think that's that's a good thing to do. Okay. I like this much better. Okay, I actually like this much better. I think that's very fair to do. Now we get, get to Brad. And like mentioned, he also can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Olsen. I think I remember actually having that in my own playthrough. But he seems more normal, even though I think... Uh, I can't remember his physique. I don't necessarily want to keep the physique of every character I play video games in my mind. But, like, for Alex, it really stood out. But I don't think it did for Brad. I think average is fair. Like, Brad, while he may have a good physique as well, never in any moment showed, like, a... Never mind. He did show quick thinking with hiding. I think alone for that, actually. I think alone for that, it's it's that was like a very intelligent move. Then obviously everybody can you know get after by the smoke a little bit, but I think just alone is intelligent there. That more alone actually I think should put him here. I think that's fair to say. And like mentioned, also has a bit more out of physique because then I would actually say Conrad is like very average, very average person. He did good on the chase and everything, but I feel like mentioned a, a male in his age would probably have the same skills and top of that. So I think Brad for his for his um, intelligence and that uh, mighty moment alone puts him here, and Conrad is very average in that sense, like very normal man basically, right? Bliss, I'd say, is um. I feel like advanced would be fair to say in a intelligence ranking if we, if we went at it like that. Her skills felt normal to me. I feel like there wasn't any moment in the game where she like was really able, at least not for my own playthrough, where she was really able to shine, like in a chase sequence or um, in a combat moment or whatever. I think it's fair here to, to just say she's normal, okay? I think Fliss is just normal human, like normal in chase and all that kind of stuff, right? Julia, on the other hand, I'd maybe actually put here, because it's it's again very difficult, because the way my choices would have went, I think she could have also go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Olsen if that's possible, or could have been involved in a chase. Again, Man of Medan is just a game that, like, when I think about Man of Medan, there just weren't that many particular in-between moments. Of character highlights, which, like mentioned, one of the big troubles the game has. The game doesn't really rely on its characters as well, or like it doesn't have a good balance of character and game highlights. We're not just the game itself is a highlight, but also like the characters itself in it, which Unto Dawn has a lot of, or House of Ashes, or even Little Hope has moments like that, in my opinion. That just doesn't happen with Men of Bedan. So, right now, when I think of Julia, I once again can't tell, hmm, did she, you know, did she have a cool moment? Is she great, or is she just, you know, I think, I think she's very normal. She is a diver as well, so that gives her a bit of condition. But I've, I think this is okay. 
I don't know. I think she she just never showed me any moment in the game where she was like, where she really felt like more than average, but also just ah, mm. we just leave it there. Okay, Julia is Julia is just whatever. She's just one of those characters in not just my thing, but across the franchise that just just really are memorable and all. So we just I go for this one. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there was a cool moment with her where she like actually can show that stuff. But okay. Little Hope, obviously the the very unique game where all of the characters we have aren't actually real, so we need to just think of them as if they're real. Andrew is very average. He can use a gun throughout the game, actually, but let's be honest, same thing here. He literally shoots it at nothing, so I think Andrew is... I think it's fine to put Andrew here. Just completely average. Um, Angela actually first felt very um um like she would be in big trouble like i remember that moment with um the the, the sea demon that well, like the chain demon um, that attacked her she um without help at first could like even without help she can actually make it but i don't know she's i think she's like 40 plus or something i just don't think she's like in the in the best condition anymore man we really went from ranking characters on like ability to ranking <laughs> their bodies and how and how, how, how glad if they were and stuff like that i think it's fair to say here she's a bit older like mentioned already she didn't seem to be you know um that athletically strong and whatever i think she showed moments like mention which she did very well, but ultimately probably lacks, you know, skills in that sense. David, am I, uh, David Daniel goes here. Um, again, I think Chris and Mike are above him, but like he really showed. I mean, he can go to actually he can go to the, again. <laughs> it's just imagination, so it's a bit. <laughs> if if the demon was real the way it was, right? Um, he is able to. Honestly, he's able to not just go toe to toe um, with the demon in combat. He's also able to like really fend it off on the on the tree as well. Actually, I just remember like if you like I went for helping him because of the because of the picture I saw. But I think if you go for Taylor, he still makes it out alive. He on his own is will be able to like you know push that spear back and just make it out. And I feel like that really. Would I put him above the other stone? Would I say he's a better survivor or like better advanced than like I think that's the way you have to think about it. I believe that Alex, Matt, Josh and Brad probably would have been able to do the same in that moment if he was him. Then again, obviously Emily and Sam maybe lack the physical strength to do similar. But they may would have been smart enough to even avoid getting into the situation in the first place. That's also like mentioned, obviously, the big difference here and there, right? I know some people may be like, now, uh, what, what do you mean that the, that the men are the better survivors because, you know, the men are stronger? I, I know what may... Uh, uh, it's difficult, like mentioned. But I think it's actually still fair to put him here. I think it's fair. He definitely showed more than these people here. But I think he w did not show... That's highly advanced, like like Mike and Chris, because like mentioned, they're above everybody else, right? I think it's fair to keep him here, okay? Because again, if we put Alex in that spot, I think he would probably do just as fine. Sam and Emily, like mentioned, if they made like the physical strength, still showed uh, advanced skills. So I think it's fair. John, in my opinion, he had a bit of a combat moment near the end, like the scene with Angela before the house, but I would probably put him here on average. He's also a bit old already, you know, he's had some days, probably. I think it's fine to put him here. I think he's average. An average guy, an average um, average strength on top of that. I think that's fair to put. Taylor, honestly, probably as well. Okay, she can also... Um, not a thing about it, though. She would have not been able to escape it, even if you don't ever, which happened for me. To be fair, though, I think that's... Having that thing around your neck, probably difficult to escape, not gonna lie. But like she can also like escape the 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 demon in the first place on the bridge and all that stuff, you know. Was it the bridge? You know where the car cars were and you had the bang at fourth one with Daniel. I think Everett's just fine. You know, I like mentioned dislike Taylor and she's one of my least favorite characters in the entire franchise, but I think skills wise she's average. I think that's totally fair. Abigail. I actually debated to put her into this tier. 
I didn't remember it. She is able to use the shotgun against Nick. She can escape the um, werewolf without getting bitten in chapter 3 as well. Outside of that, there aren't any other moments where she really showcases survivability. In chapter 8, she gets saved or not. You know, she would die in that moment because she was fast enough, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then in chapter... Actually, then though in chapter 9, she could be able to escape Emma last second as well. I do believe, though, that... It's fa it's fair to put it here, okay? I feel like mention. I think it's good to think about it. I have to compare them to the other people in the same tier, and I think they all are definitely more <laughs> more average. Probably not a positive thing, but I think it's fair to put it here. I think she she lacks skills in that sense. Yeah, I think she's like she's ever ever average like conditionally. Well, I feel like then she just never really gave off that that strong vibe like other female characters like Emily and that Sam had. I think that's fair. I think Lex skills is a fair tier to put her in. Again, I think she has a bit of capability inside of her, which we saw in Chapter 3. But I think she's not that insane either. And women like Fliss or Taylor are definitely above her. I think that's fair. Now Dylan is interesting because Dylan... Is a uh, fantastic. Actually, yeah. I actually want to put Dylan here. You know, um, on average, because in my opinion, he's a very average young man. Like there are definitely like if you look at Chris and Josh and Mike as example, or like Matt, who are in around the same age, they're definitely physically capable of more. Like Dylan is really. He doesn't. He's definitely not someone you would see do well in close combat. One hundred percent not. Unlike you know Ryan did or or Jacob even. Wait, did Jacob have a close combat moment? Actually not, but I think in that sense, Dylan is very average, but like he's very intelligent, you know? Um, and just the fact that he's able to operate a crane, that's good, but that's also a very niche moment, to be honest, okay? Let's let's not forget that. That's a very niche um, um, situation there, you know? Like I mentioned, other people would have been able to do it, so that's a really huge plus for him. But I probably would still put him here, to be honest. I don't know. I feel like if he got into a chase sequence like Jacob in the woods, would he have done as well? Would he have done as well in any of the situations these characters were in? Like mentioned, that's again probably the best way to um, do this ranking, to compare him to other characters on the same ranking. I do not believe he would have done as well as these characters in their respective situations. Again, it, would these characters have done as well in the crane situation? Probably not. Who knows? It's hard to guess. Like, maybe there's a bit of a, um average knowledge there from everybody, so they would be able to do it too. It's, like, mentioned such a niche situation to be able to, like, really put it on, you know, to really use it to showcase him in general. I'd probably still keep him here. Because, like mentioned, outside of that moment with the crane, there's it's, like, very, very average. You know, which, like, really fits it here, you know? Like, the sequence, like, he's not the one really getting chased in the, in the, in the Chapter 10 sequence, right? He's If he's still alive, he will always be there with Caitlyn. Caitlyn can't die in Chapter 9, which is funny enough, um, by the way. So there he's mostly hiding, right? He, he nearly actually runs into um, the, the werewolf in chapter 6. Wait, chapter 5, I think, actually. I think it's fine to keep him here. Again, he has that crane moment, which is really, really advanced and probably not a lot of people can do, not the average person can do, so they probably should put him here. I, I keep him here, okay? I think it's just... That's difficult. That's probably the most difficult one. Bro, the entire video does for me to... Judge, average or advanced, you know. Some would even maybe argue that operating a crane is highly advanced skill. But again, it's hard to judge for myself. If you would put me now into a moment, or like into a crane, and told me to operate it, would I be able to do it? I don't know. Ah. I'll rethink it while doing the other characters, okay? And then we, we get to that. Same thing as for Taylor. While I may dislike Emma, she did very well in the ch fourth chapter. She, you must admit, she... You know, it's possible for her to be completely stupid and just on the trap and just straight up die. But if she's clever and first, you know, use the taser, escapes very well, quick on her feet, think... 
Damn, is it advanced though? It's so hard to judge. Is it is it advanced to be able to like run in that moment? Like it wasn't like necessarily fast, you know, like she wasn't spr like highly sprinting, you know? It's mm, would the average person in her age or the average girl in her age, like Jessica as example, or Abigail, would have Abigail been able to do what Emma did? I mean, then putting her in with, oh, obviously put him about those two already, right? Of course. But honestly, she did seem athletic in some way. Like, like actually, like agility-wise above the others. I think it's fair to put her similar as Emily and Sam. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's actually fair. Again, not a big Emma fan. I really don't like her. But that chapter 4 sequence alone, I think, really, really puts her into the advanced situation. Then again, I actually have to think, and maybe it would be fair for Phyllis to say as well. <sighs> nah, Phyllis didn't have a moment like that. Where you could say the same thing. I would say so. Jacob. Mm, interesting case, because um, he... Similar to Alex, has a great physique. We can like we really see, okay, he's strong, he's athletic, he's able to really, you know, um, escape with the wood and all, all that stuff. Several times actually, if he makes it out, out of the cage as well. But again, is that actually yeah, alone for that. He is an above average physique. Okay, he's he's very, very um athletic. Yeah, I think that alone puts him advanced, you know, advanced skills alone of that, you know, advanced speed, advanced um Advanced physique is, I think, really strong contender for it a lot because, like, you look at Conrad, Andrew, John, and Dylan. Comparison, they're way more average body-wise, and therefore, like, already lack what um Matt, Alex, and Jacob have because they're just way more athletic. They just add so much into the survival capabilities, and like mentioned, Chris and Mike have that as well, even though they're not as jacked, right? But they still have those kids while being strong with weapons, and that is also. But well, we put Caitlyn here as well, because not only is she, like, she may lack the strength of characters like we have here, right? Uh, because she's just, you know, not as physically strong, but um, her skills with the shotgun alone are worthy to put her in the highly advanced skills. Plus, she also does really, really well um, in, a, in the sequence with um, survival instincts um, in the 10th chapter. If the teddy is still there, you know, like the bunny toy, she can use it. Um, Balancing over the beam and all that kind of stuff, right? Caitlin showed in more than one situation that she's highly advanced, um, not just in general instincts, but with a shotgun. And that definitely puts her above the others here. And obviously, then the same goes for Laura. To be fair, it must be mentioned that um, Laura, obviously, that all the badass stuff that goes on, you know, um, in following chapter 7, she's infected. Which obviously, you know, gives her way more. It's like a boost, right? It's like the super serum from, from Captain America, right? But even before that, I think she seems rather athletic. Plus, um, just. Oh, I mean, she's able, without getting injured, like without being infected, to out to, like, you know, to, like, take the weapon of a, of a cop. I think that's already, you know. I mean,. Would Alex be able to do the same? Probably. Could could Matt, Daniel, maybe even Emma do it? Who knows? And again, even though she... But even then, I think, you know, I think just the, the, the world of infection only gives, like, like a bit of general strength. Like we saw when she, like, you know, um, is able to break Jedediah's neck. But I think the weapon skills, I don't think that, that adds on top of that. Right? I don't think I don't think the uh, I don't think the infection um, gives you gives you a boost in accuracy. So I think she's similar to Kayla in that sense. Not just athletically and then instinct wise very good, but also with the gun. And that like puts her in a very similar tier as these two. Yeah. They're like basically the characters that are not only good in chase and athleticness, but with a gun. And that's like, you know. Max is as average as it comes. We didn't have any true moment to really see him showcase a lot of survival skills because he spends most of the game in a jail and then afterwards as a werewolf so you know but he seems like a very regular dude that's the best way to put it similar to andrew just a very normal dude and i'd say the same goes for nick then 
again, no real moment for us to see if he is capable of more, but he also just seems normal in comparison to characters above. Just a normal dude. But then we got Ryan, and he's definitely highly advanced, um, like these two. Good with the gun, able to work with it, um, strong on chase, great survival instincts, you know, not pulling out the knife is very, very smart, something that many people don't know, you know, that if you're injured uh, with, with stuff like that, right, do not pull it, pull it out, it will just further the wound and more blood will go out. I think it's more than fair to put him here in a both intelligence way, but also like a physical skill-wise way, definitely. Again, who knows if these characters are good with a gun? We didn't get to see it, but they did show it, and that's why we have to put him here. And now the devil me, which I think is interesting. Charlie, I'd say, is like physically more than average. I think comparable to... Actually, no. I remember. I think you all know. Do you, do you remember the video with the um, what happens if Charlie, you know, or if you like account Charlie or not? I think, you know, the family there with his chest open and with stuff um, put on it. Like what means put on it with the, you know, engraved with the knife. He actually is quite jacked. He's physically actually pretty good. Okay. I'd say actually he's... I'd say he's advanced. Like he's actually a bit older, but in very good condition for his age. Plus smart on top of that. You know, being able to survive that furnace trap. Not easy. Many people were probably dying there. Which he can obviously do as well, right? But he can also survive the grinder. Do that hiding, right? I think it's more than fair to put him here. And I may honestly have to say, again, would have Alex been able to do the same? Probably. Would have Brad been able? Probably. Would have any of these characters been able to do the same? Likely. Like, again, that's the way you need to think of it here. Can I imagine Charlie with a gun, though, as good as these five? I'm not sure about that. So I think it's fair to keep him here. I think it's fair to keep him in the advanced skills, okay? He's definitely advanced conditionally and um, intelligence-wise. He obviously also has the knowledge about Syracuse, which obviously can give him good um, advantage in situations. That's fair. I think it's fair to keep him here. I think it's fair to keep these five um, in the own tier. And as much as I love her, as much as she's precious to me, everyone will literally just die, okay? Like, the one moment she has within the blackout room, the only reason she doesn't die in that moment is because she might literally just, just want to. Just like, the hair is enough for me for now. Suffocation chamber, she can't really do much about that. She do can decide to hide in that one moment, but basically only because she got told to. She's like mentioned with her asthma and a bit more of a panicky personality. If she was put into a situation close, close... Cl <laughs> close, close, uh, in close combat or like in a close encounter with like one of the monsters throughout the games, she just dies. Okay, I'm sorry, Aaron, I love you, but you're, you got no chance. No chance, dude, no, 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 no chance at all. Jamie is 100% advanced, um, was debating here as well, again, difficult to judge, because, um, again, we don't see a moment where she may show it as well. I may want to put it in here, though, just for the pure intelligence alone. Or, like, pure moment decision-making. With the, like, the way she can, um... Like, so, like, the way she can do the, um... I oh, shall never mind. I think the suffocation chamber is, once again, a problematic example. Because even she couldn't know about the window crack. So, that's just luck. But the, the glass trap, though... Very smart thinking there with the with the. Or actually, never mind. Kate can do the same there too. I keep her here. It's it's fair to keep her here. She's good in chase as well. And honestly, it's probably then the same case here. I think she's. Again, I'm still unsure about Fliss. I want to keep her here or not. To be honest. <laughs> again, the thing about Kate is um. That she and Jamie share very similar paths. Um, Jamie, like mentioned, has the entire electrician thing going on. So this can really help her in specific situations. Even though that's once again similar to Dylan's um, crane thing. Rather niche. Um, for Kate, I don't think she has a cool moment like 
No, never mind. Like, that's what I was about to say, you know? Both of them are very, very similar in their paths, you know? Like, if if any of them die in the, in the classroom, then their ways would basically be identical, right? Jamie can go toe-to-toe -to -toe, um, with the map on the boat and survive. Pinkay can as well, so... That's definitely, I think it's, yeah, I think it's more than fair to put him there. I think that's totally okay. Keeping both Jamie and Kate here is definitely okay. And like mentioned, just alone the fact that they have this this knowledge about killers and stuff like that can maybe help them in niche situations too. But that's more than fair. Mark. So Mark, physically, probably one of the strongest because, it, you know... We're still unsure, like, I'm at least still unsure how to judge the man. Is he a normal human being, you know? Or is he actually a bit of a, you know, um, like, the way he can fall from the height and then just stand up Then did not seem normal to me. He is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, close combat, and even kill him. You know, kill him. I feel like that may deserve highly advanced. Because, again, can I imagine... Oh, not here. Can I imagine um, any of these others to do the same? Would I imagine to any of these five to be able to do that in that moment? It's like mentioned so hard to judge, you know, and that's why I'm also, by the way, once again, very, very excited for your opinions. Um, but like, they have the, the weaponry showcase to, you know, put them here. But to be able to straight up kill the main antagonist like that? Close combat? To be fair, I think Alex actually has a similar situation. Or like, depending on your character, a similar situation where you can do that. I think Conrad may be able to do it as well with Olsen. But again, Olsen is also like, more normal Jack, if that's, a, if that's a good way to say it. Again, it's so difficult to judge some of these situations, but... I mean, he's physically definitely capable of more than all of these five, 100%. I think that's fair to say. But again, strength is not everything. Strength isn't necessarily everything. Just because he's jacked or, like, physically very strong and was able to therefore overcome um, Dumet on the boat does not necessarily mean he's, he's as skilled in survival as these five, which I mentioned showed both great physical conditional strength or, like, conditional athletic skills and the weaponry, you know? So I think it remains fair to keep him here in a similar idea like Alex and Jacob, you know, where they're just physically and athletically very advanced. Um, and then, like mentioned, Dylan remains, it's a bit tricky for me, the crane operation thing alone is highly advanced, which I think, like mentioned, not a lot of people can do. But it's such a niche moment, which can also screw up. And outside of that, he's just a very regular dude who never really came across as physically capable as any of the other characters above him. So I think it's fair to keep him here. Again, survival, it's such a niche moment, this entire situation there, you know? People above him here probably would have fucked him in a moment and would have died, you know, not be able to do what he did. But I feel like I can't use that one... <sighs> it can though, he got... <laughs> he's into quantum physics, so that alone is more than advanced in skills, but... <sighs> if I put him in situations other characters were in... Like, it's, it's this, this struggle, right? People above him here would not be able to do as fair in the moment he was in, but he would not be able to do as fair in moments other characters were in, right? I think that's the that's a troublesome way to look at it. So if we then just picture it out and just look at him as a normal as a normal character without that moment, I think it's fair to keep him here. What do you think? Should I have put him here because of the collaboration alone? Should I have put? People down here, up here, or that are here, down here. Tell me your thoughts and everything down below the comments as well. Like mentioned, these Tillis videos are very different from my edited videos because they're way less constructed and way less, um, you know, way less um, scripted. It's just really me in the recording button after a bit of preparation and then just thinking, talking, arguing, discussing with y'all together. And I think it's still fun and very different, and I think therefore just a good amount of variety for the channel. 
So now you tell me, what do you think about the list? Okay, so here in uh, uh, a red camera, no, here it's a full. How does your list look like? Do you um, think my, um, I think the best way to say it is my, uh, my, what's the word for it? What do you, what do you say when you like have to, <sighs> what's the German word for it? Maybe I can think of Prognose, is prognose the right word? Analyzes? Analyzes. I think, do you think my analyzes is correct? You know, do you think I judge the characters correctly here, given the skill sets? Or do you disagree? Or, you know, tell me all about down below in the comments. Show me your list, everything you want to say. Give it all down below in the comments. Give me a, or like, more tier list ideas. The only other ones I mentioned I had in my mind were, like, mentioned um, tier listing their intelligence, <laughs> uh, which, like, you know, can be fun, you know? Maybe a bit too basic. Um, other stuff like mentioned was screen time and playability, which could be cool. Um, but I mentioned maybe you have other ideas. Tell me about them down below. And other than that, look forward to lots of more content, more tier lists, more edited videos, more playthroughs, more gameplay. So much. So yeah, for now I say thank you for watching. Hope you once again had a bit of fun with this um, unscripted tier list video. And I'll see you again soon on the channel. See you soon. Bye.